Hello, welcome to Tea with a Druid. Uh, do, do gather round and uh, pull up a log by the fire and uh, type in uh, where you're from and uh, it'll be lovely to see you here. And um, I can't see anybody yet, maybe nobody's here. Maybe in the groves there's nobody here or maybe there's a technical problem, which is, ah, uh, no, Tam is here. Good day, Philip, that's lovely to see you. Okay, so we know it's working and hopefully you can hear me. And Martha from uh, Colorado, that's fantastic. Art from Louisiana, fantastic. Great, lovely to see you, lovely to see you. So, you know, this process that uh, I've talked about quite a bit, uh, uh, this magic of us coming together in this way, which is so extraordinary that, of course, at one level, we are just sitting in front of our computers or our phones or our tablets all around the world. But in, in another way, we are actually meeting together. And this magic seems to be growing stronger. Something really powerful is happening because every so often somebody really is breaking through this kind of barrier and actually physically manifesting here in this room. And this happened just recently when suddenly somebody who uh, joins in the teas, you may have seen her, Pamela from New Zealand, suddenly I looked and there, there she appeared. She suddenly seems to have manifested <laughs> literally from the other side of the world. Hello. Now, how did that happen, Pamela? You... Well, I don't, magic. Magic, it's the only answer. It's I agree. the only possible answer. Absolutely agree. Well, it's lovely to see Pamela <laughs> here from, from New Zealand. And the other wonderful bit of magic about, about these, uh, I think they're called apports. In spiritualism, it's called an apport, when something goes from one realm to another. So Pamela has apported from, uh, from New Zealand, but she's brought a present. Visitors often seem to bring presents when they apport. And she's brought something she's been working on for ages, the Wheel of Shagais, spelt what you might think is Segais, but it's actually Shagais. And you'll perhaps recognize the Salmon of Wisdom in the center of this wheel. And Pamela's been working for years on this, a divination system, and a, a system of coming to understand the mystery of change and how it manifests uh, in your life and in the life of organizations and groups of people. And you open the box of goodies and you find a little bag of hazelnuts because you know in, in the well of Shagais uh, there were the salmon uh, eating the hazelnuts. And you have the cloth there with Will Worthington's fantastic picture of the salmon from the Druid Animal Oracle. And you see already by looking at this, that this is, this is we're going in deep, decay, genesis, openness, transformation, commitment, alignment, and so on. So it's a, it's a fantastic system that works, that makes a lot of sense for anybody who's been studying Druidry, makes a lot of sense for anybody who's familiar with the spiritual path. And you can find out more about it by uh, I'll, I'll post up the, um, the link there uh, and on, on the comments at the end of our session. And I've put a link also in my blog post that uh, will go up in, in an hour or so uh, with the recording of this. And so you can see the fabulous website that Pamela's made. And uh, as well, if you happen to be in Glastonbury on June the 4th, the Monday after the Obod Summer Gathering in Glastonbury, uh, come and join us all for a morning's workshop, a morning's immersion in the mysteries of the Wheel of Shagais uh, with Pamela. That'll be fantastic. And Wallace says that's cool. And Mar Marjolein in uh, the Netherlands says that's great. So that's wonderful. Um, so Beltane, blessings to you. And um, Jesse wants to roast the hazelnuts. No, you can't roast them, Jesse. You're supposed to use them uh, with, the, with the oracle. Um, so... Now, here's the subject that, uh, that I'd, like, I'd like to talk to you uh, about, or talk with you about today, explore with you. And that is the, 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 the question of, uh, of the physical world, really, and embodiment. I've talked about Pamela apporting from the other side of the world. I'm here in my physical body talking to you uh, in your physical bodies. 
And one of the approaches we can have, we can take in life, is to say, well, that's all very well, but the physical body is the locus of suffering. The physical world is a very difficult place to live in with tremendous amounts of suffering. And actually, it's the spiritual world that's the real world. Uh, the body and the natural world is a place of illusion. And so the path of spiritual development should be a path of detachment, of disidentification, of disinterestedness in these things. And when the going gets tough, that can be an appealing approach. But the difficulty with that approach is it can lead to denial, denial of the pleasures of the body, the pleasures and beauties of the natural world. It can lead to repression, repression in oneself, and as one, as one sees in religious fundamentalism around the world, repression of other people. So it's a hugely problematic path. And many of us now, I think, are turning to nature spiritualities and nature ways because we're seeking a path that celebrates the body, that celebrates the natural world, that engages with the challenges and difficulties of being in the body, of being in the natural world, um, but that does not seek to escape, to deny or repress. So that's, I think, what we mean when we talk about Druidry being an embodied spirituality. It's a spirituality that is encouraging us to be in the world and to love it um, and to have an attitude of embracing, em embracing life. However, talk to a Druid, talk to a Pagan, talk to somebody following a nature way, and almost certainly they will also believe in another world. They'll believe in a spiritual world. They'll believe that however wonderful the body and the natural world is, that there is a, a greater reality. There's something more than that. And perhaps that's a reality that we go to when we die and slough off our mortal coil. And so, in effect, what we're doing is we're having our cake and eating it. <clears throat> we're saying, yes, uh, I want to engage with the beauties of this world, and there's a meaning for me being here. It's not about escaping this world. It's about engaging with the world and being of use in the world. But also, uh, there, are other, there are other levels of reality, and I can be detached. I can detach myself from my body, my feelings, my mind, to connect with pure awareness inside me. And the drawing a card for this, of course, this is what we get, the goose card from the Animal Oracle, which is a, a wonderful teacher for us because the goose is one of the birds that flies the highest. It's amongst the highest flying birds, 29,000 feet. Some geese have been recorded flying over the Himalayas. Um, so they fly incredibly high, and yet they also love strutting about in the mud and floating about in the water. And, and so this is, I think, a lesson for us to say, yes, be, enjoy rolling your sleeves up and, and splashing about in the mud, and also enjoy flying really high. We can, we can love being in our house, but we can also love going outside and, and looking up at the up at the stars. And um, there's a particular uh, exercise that Roberto Assagioli, who uh, was the founder of psychosynthesis, which is a wonderful system of uh, psychotherapy and psychology that incorporates an understanding of the spiritual, um, that is one of the key exercises that Assagioli brought to, to psychosynthesis, which is he called the identification disidentification exercise. That's a bit clumsy. People have renamed it things like the centering exercise. And this is a really nice way of um, formalizing and bringing into awareness precisely the attitude that I think we probably all adopt. Do tell me in the comments if you don't adopt this attitude, and that, that, that'll be really interesting to read. But I suspect most of us adopt the belief that 
we want to engage with the physical world and with our bodies but we also want to be able to detach from them and to to connect with what do we call it the divine the other world um, the source and so 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 this exercise renders that conscious puts it into words it can sometimes be a little intellectual this exercise so it doesn't always work for me certainly um, but sometimes it does and like any exercise uh, it's it it repays doing a number of times at your own pace and giving plenty of time but I thought it would be fun as a way of illustrating this concept that I've shared with you I thought it would be fun to for us to do it in a meditation so we can experience it at uh, at an experiential level as well as just taking it on board or considering it as a concept so should we do that um, let's let's become aware of being in the grove now uh, you know we're in a place for those of you who aren't familiar with druidry the idea of a grove is just a, a clearing in the forest uh, there's dappled shade so it's not too hot it's been fantastically hot and sunny down in Sussex today so the thought of being in the shade of a sacred grove is lovely and and so here we are in the sacred grove the earth beneath us the trees around us and the sky above us and as I open to the earth beneath me I can feel the stability of the earth the strength of the earth the healing power of the earth and I just allow my cares and anxieties just to fall away for a while to be to be supported by the nourishing earth and I sense the trees around me a lovely sense of protection and power and strength their roots reaching deep into the earth their trunks stretching up their leaves high above me and branches and I breathe in and I breathe in the smell of the trees that lovely refreshing green smell of the trees and then I become aware of the sky and I breathe in the energy of the sky and the energy of the sky brings me vitality and strength and the energy of the sky meets the energy of the earth within the center of my being and I become aware of being seated here I become aware of myself and of my body and I just sense my body here and I just tell myself that I have a body but I am more than my body I am the one who is aware the self the center my body may be rested or feeling tired but somehow I remain the same the observer at the center of all my experience I'm aware of my body I love my body but I'm more than my body and I sense my feeling self now my emotions and I know that I have emotions but also that I am more than my emotions my emotions change they come and go but I love the fact that I feel deeply I have emotions 
but I'm more than my emotions. And now I become aware of my mind, my intellect. But I know and sense that I'm more than my mind. Regardless of my thoughts and regardless of how my beliefs have changed over the years, I remain the one who is aware, the one who chooses, the one who directs my thinking process. I have a mind, but I am more than that. I am a centre of pure awareness at one with all being. And just breathing in and breathing out. Just aware of myself as pure being. I gradually allow myself to be aware of having a mind, having feelings, and having a body. And I become aware of my body seated here. I sense the trees around me the sky above me and the earth beneath me. I sense my fellow companions in the circle. And then I take in a deep breath, hold it for a while, and then let it out. And as I let it out, I let my awareness of the sacred grove begin to fade as I become aware of being seated where I am. And slowly I open my eyes, fully present, here and now. I slowly open my eyes to find myself gazing at my computer screen or my tablet or my phone. Sensing my connection with everyone who's here but also being fully present where I am at the same time. And that's nice to read, Karen, when you talk about how, how these meditations just help you to, to pace and focus. And I, I think that's the value of guided meditations, really. And of course, we can do these things ourselves. But sometimes it just really helps if we can just let go and, and just hear a voice taking us on the journey, providing the focus for us in a meditation. And then we can, um, we can just really go with it. And Gio says that she had a lovely breeze in her grove. That's, that's, that's great. Holy cats, I felt a strong, shivery charge burst out of me during that, says Martha. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Calm for the end of the day, says, says Alan. And that's, that's, I think, another purpose for these meditations. I mean, they're deliberately short because, you know, if I make them longer, you're going to go deeper. We're all going to get deeper, and that's okay. But, but given the circumstances and the fact that we're all around the world and uh, this feels like the right length of time. So, so thank you for being here. Remember that, that all your comments are read. Um, I, I go down and I recharge this enormous mug uh, with more tea and I come back up. I then pop this up on YouTube because some people don't do Facebook. They watch it on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> and I pop it up on the blog. And in the blog, I put links to Pamela's website um, to the workshop in Glastonbury on the 4th of June. 
and uh, a little kind of summary of, of what I talked about, the essence of it. And um, yeah, so lovely to see you. And uh, I'm off uh, on an Obod retreat on Thursday, just down the road, just an hour away, which is going to be lovely. And uh, I'll be back uh, Monday. So I'll see you again on uh, Monday. And thanks to Matt for doing the uh, broadcast last week. Uh, I know he had a technical problem, but I hope you were able to stay with him and enjoyed it. That was great. And see you all hopefully next week. Okay, lots of love and bye.